Well, as you can see, I'm standing on a pedestrian overpass over one of Guangzhou's busiest avenues. And uh, this is also one of the loudest, uh, most bustling parts of the city. But in a moment, I'm gonna take you to a place which I would consider one of the quietest parts of downtown Guangzhou. And sometimes it can also feel like the scariest part of downtown Guangzhou as well. Uh, you won't find it on any tourist guides, but I'll take you there now and we'll see what we can find. Now this is our destination, so let's head inside. So where I'm about to take you is an urban village and it's one of uh, the last remaining authentic urban villages in downtown Guangzhou. And uh, it's definitely a must visit for uh, family and friends when they come and see me in Guangzhou because it really is a great place to see the contrast uh, that you can find in Guangzhou between the old and the new. Now the reason why I love coming, whoa, <laughs> that uh, delivery guy, that was a, a close call. Now the reason why I love coming to this part of Guangzhou is just because it's uh, so different to the rest of downtown Guangzhou. You know, there's, it's all alleyways, it's almost like a maze when you come in here and it's so easy to get lost. <laughs> As you can see there are no cars but there are delivery drivers but as you can see or as you can probably hear suddenly it's become very quiet apart from the average toot from a <laughs> delivery guy and as we uh, get further into the urban village we'll see the stark contrast between modern Guangzhou, the CBD of Guangzhou, and uh, this urban village. But I'll explain to you more in a minute about some of the changes that are happening in these urban villages in Guangzhou. Oh, we've got a bit of a traffic jam here. <laughs> oh. But as you can see here in this uh, urban village, we've got everything. We've got a tailor with some suits. <laughs> we've got electronic shops selling mobile phones. We've got little restaurants, snack bars, convenience stores. Now, urban villages uh, are an integral part of some of China's major cities just because a lot of migrant workers move to the larger cities including Guangzhou, uh, Shanghai and Beijing and uh, property prices can be really high in these cities. Um, where I live is just down the road from here and uh, the average three bedroom apartment can set you back around 15,000 renminbi um, which is quite expensive and uh, definitely out of reach of uh, uh, people who come from rural areas to Guangzhou uh, and work in jobs such as the service sector um, where the average salary might be around four or five thousand renminbi per month so that's why having affordable accommodation in urban villages like this is important for a lot of people because here in these urban villages, you can find apartments for less than 1,000 renminbi per month. Uh, I actually had a friend who was a teacher um, and because he was saving up for a property, he was saving up to buy a house, he actually decided to live in this urban village and uh, he was able to find a two bedroom apartment for 
800 renminbi per month. Now, obviously, the building didn't have an elevator and uh, didn't have all your modern conveniences, but uh, he made that sacrifice in order to save up enough money uh, for a deposit and then he bought himself an apartment. Oh, we've got another. We've got another. We've got another traffic jam. As you can see, the, uh, the alleyways here are really tight. Um, and probably you might be thinking that uh, it's uh, quite dirty in here but uh, if you take a look at the streets or the alleys I should say it's actually pretty clean um, and you'd be surprised how densely populated these areas are but uh, it's kept relatively clean What have we got here? Oh! What are you doing? Oh! Good to eat? Good to eat. Do you do it or do you do it? Do you do it? Do you do it? Do you do it? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Bye bye. Now I mentioned earlier that this is one of the quiet most uh, quiet places in Guangzhou in downtown Guangzhou even though we can hear some music at, a mo at the moment you'll see what I mean in a minute as we keep venturing further into this urban village because the usual sound of cars and buses honking <laughs> You won't find in here. Ah, uh, sounds like there's some renovations going, but oh, do you notice that? Oh, if I stop walking, then it's really, really quiet in here. Got a hair salon. We've got some more stores. Another restaurant. Oh, hello. You some? You some? Wow. This is what? Yang rou. Yang rou. Yang rou. I will eat it next time. Thank you. I am an Australian. Ah. 谢谢啊，拜拜。So as you can see, this uh, urban village is actually full of life. I don't know if you can hear, but there's obviously a kindergarten or a primary school around here because I can hear a lot of kids. I think we've uh, mostly made it through the maze. And uh, in a moment, I'll show you what I was talking about with uh, some of the changes to these urban villages in Guangzhou. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the government here in Guangzhou is actually investing a lot of money into renovating some of these urban villages uh, to make the uh, living standards higher for the residents that live in these places. And uh, I can show you a little bit of an example of that. Uh, a park that was built um, not that long ago here in this urban village. Got some traditional Chinese architecture and a pond which I'm sure is uh, very good for feng shui. So as you can see, there are changes uh, happening in these urban villages. 
um, to make sure that the people living here have access to uh, parks and uh, there's also medical centres which I'll see if I can find one um, and they've also started renovating some of the streets so this is the contrast I'm talking about so now we've we're still in the urban village but I can show you the difference if I can figure out how to rotate the camera finally okay all right so technically we're still here we go here's a, a medical center and you can see renovations are happening and you can see that this street has already been renovated uh, and the uh, aesthetics have been improved um, with some decorations we've got some lanterns up there and we've got businesses that have opened here as they say Rome wasn't built in a day but as you can see things are improving even in uh, what probably would be considered as uh, low socio-economic areas of Guangzhou so uh, that's the end of the tour of the uh, urban village in Guangzhou but in a moment I'm gonna hop in a taxi and take you to another part of Guangzhou uh, which actually used to be an urban village but has since been totally transformed and I think you'll be surprised by what you see and I'll explain more about the process when we get there all right now we're about to leave the urban village and we are now back in downtown Guangzhou so compare this to where we were, where we've just been now you might be wondering why I like to bring visitors to Guangzhou that come and see me uh, to that urban village and it's because I think it's a great way just to show showcase um, the changes that have happened in Guangzhou because uh, this part of the city Tianhe district was mainly made up of urban villages like that in the past but now it's become the uh, CBD of the city and uh, everyone that I've taken there has really found it really really interesting and uh, I hope you found it interesting too uh, I'm now just gonna jump in a cab and we'll head off to uh, our next destination Alright, so here we are, uh, this is Liedo village, so this is an example of uh, an urban village that has been completely transformed and renovated. So here you can see the contrast of downtown Guangzhou, you've got the uh, modern buildings in the background and the more ancient traditional buildings in the foreground. But this is Liedo village and this used to be what I just showed you but as you can see it's been completely transformed into uh, modern apartments so what actually happened uh, with this area of Guangzhou was that uh, through a, a process of negotiation the government uh, bought out the uh, the land and the, the properties here uh, in this urban village and then 
built modern apartment blocks. The owners of the original housing that was here, they were compensated with uh, apartments that uh, equaled the square footage of the houses that they originally owned in this area. Um, now, because this is, this is so close to the CBD, the central part of the city, uh, a lot of the apartments here have been rented out by the people who now own them or who now occupy them uh, in order to earn some money. So uh, I guess everybody wins out in the end because the people that lived here originally, they got new houses and if they decide to rent them out to people, they also have a passive income. So I'll just give you a look at uh, what kind of housing is now available in this area. So here we go. So obviously you can see a major contrast between where we just were and this village, near the village. We've got playgrounds for the kids. We've got nice open spaces, security to keep the residents safe. And what happened here really improved the living standards of the people who originally lived here because uh, it's much more comfortable for the residents and uh, they have easier access to services that they need. So this is uh, the village now and just over there is the CBD of Guangzhou. So we're now just leaving the village. Take a look back. So there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tour of uh, <laughs> one of the scariest places in Guangzhou. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but walking through that area, I wasn't actually that concerned at all. Um, the first time I went there, I was a little bit scared um, because I know a lot of local people would probably try to avoid that area because they would consider it to be unsafe. But I've been there many, many times and have had no problems at all. And as you can see with the uh, encounter at that restaurant, the people in the urban village are super friendly uh, and uh, always willing to have a chat. Maybe not so much this time because I was carrying a, a, a camera around. But uh, I'll finish off this video here in this park that's been built as part of the uh, renovation of Leda Village. And uh, let me know what you think about today's video down in the comment section below. And uh, we'll just enjoy the serenity of this, uh, this park. So I'll see you in the next video.